<clears throat> hey everybody, welcome back to Leosophy. I shaved my head Sunday and I have sunburnt my scalp. It is awful. I've never done this before. Well, I've, I've shaved my head plenty of times, but I've not, I guess, gotten a full day worth of sun when I have. Oh well, it is what it is. Um, this is episode three of the Leosophy Religion series. And uh, today I'm going to be covering animism and totemism and sort of comparing and contrasting the two because they are very similar and there's a huge overlap with both traditional polytheistic nature worship and to some much lesser extent pantheism and I, I just want to kind of clear up the differences and also especially similarities between the two. I mean it's kind of hard to, to create a, a dividing line between totemism and animism. So let's start with uh, what is animism. Animism is the belief that the divine is manifest in forms of nature. Now, that sounds like nature worship, right? I mean, if you think about uh, Greek paganism, they were polytheistic, but most of their deities represented fundamental parts of nature, right? So, I mean, Zeus had the thunderbolt, so isn't that a form of, like, storm worship, in other words? And uh, the short answer is no, not really, because Zeus was an individual, an anthropomorphized idea of a person who used the thunderbolt. The same thing goes with Thor. Thor wasn't thunder itself. Conversely, though, if you look at the, the easiestly, the easily, the best uh, example of, of animism today is Shinto. If you look at them, it's, it's not... The pantheon is very different. Uh, the pantheon directly references nature. So, uh, for example, a fox, uh, a, a kitsune, that you actually see could be a genuine divine messenger of Inari, the hermaphroditic rice god. See how that works? It's not, there's not an, a symbolic association, it's a real association. So in that sense, genuine artifacts in nature are divine. They represent the divine, not just symbolically, but literally. They have uh, religious power, religious authority. In, in some ways, you could compare it to, uh, if you think about uh, Catholicism and the, the relics of saints, you know, you'll have like the femur of, of some martyr, and it has healing abilities. Well, think about that <clears throat> in relation to natural things. Um, a really old tree may have uh, the ability to, to grant people's wishes, for example. That the tree's not representative of a deity. The tree is the deity. The tree is divine. That's how animism works. Elements of nature are sacred. They're not. They're not symbolic. They don't represent something. They are sacred. So um, it's it, 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 it's easy to confuse the two. But that's a pretty. There's a pretty clear dividing line there. Zeus is the Greek god of thunder. Zeus is not the thunder. Raiden is the Shinto god of thunder. Raiden is the thunder. The two are indistinguishable. I'm not saying that every uh, clap of thunder and, and every bolt of lightning is physically him. I'm saying that the two are interchangeable. So that's how animism works. Animism, um, you're not just using abstractions to create a divine uh, form for nature a divine uh, vehicle for nature. Nature is the vehicle for the divine. Nature is the divine, uh, inherently. So that's, I think that's a big difference. And, and it's, it's interesting because we, we have so little information, really, about uh, a lot of traditional European pagan beliefs. Maybe they were more animistic in nature, and less what we now consider to be polytheistic in nature. It's really hard to say. Because the best examples we have of polytheism uh, come from very urban societies. You know, the Greeks and the Romans, they were a very urbane bunch. Even though the word pagan means country dweller, the, what we have handed down comes from urban sources, I mean. I don't mean that, that uh, Rome and Greek were inherently somehow uh, just, just a bunch of collected cities or anything. Um, and then that, that brings me, so let's go from animism to totemism. Well, what's totemism? Well, in that case, uh, just as deities represent elements of nature in polytheism and the elements of nature are divine in animism, in totemism there's sort of a connecting 
uh, component. So, hmm, man-made, or in some rarer cases, nature-made objects provide a link between the divinity found in nature and a person, place, or thing that's not inherently uh, natural. Um, uh, the Ojibwe people, which, you know, again, listen to the 13th Floor podcast. We talk about the Ojibwe, uh, Ojibwe language and uh, belief system a lot with that, but especially when we talk about Wendigo and uh, uh, sea monsters. But anyway, um, in, in their belief system, and you also see this in Inuit belief systems, you've got a, a divine com- element, like maybe the ocean. You know, the sea could be divine and could be represented by a deity that, that uh, has control over the sea. And then you have a man-made object that interfaces with, say, a family. A family. Okay, I've got. I've got. Here's an example. We've got the sea. It's divine, and some family has a uh, totem. That's where the term totemism comes from, made from whale bone, which is an object that comes from the sea, from a very powerful animal from the sea, and they've carved that into an effigy that represents their family, and they keep it in their home. And that, whenever they go out fishing, protects them. <clears throat> in other words, a man-made creation is a vessel for the divine that's found in nature. So you have this interesting transition. You've got kind of like a middleman going on there with the totems. You've got something that a person made that has the power of whatever natural form it came from. And totemism, by the way, it, it's not just a specific religion, it can be found everywhere. I mean, like I was talking about with ancestor worship being an inherent and spontaneous and natural human response, totemism is pretty natural. I mean, think about little kids. They'll they'll paint uh, flames on their uh, bicycles to make them go faster. It's a very fetishistic and totemistic uh, idea. This idea that if, if I represent something on something else, then the qualities of what I'm representing are going to manifest on that other thing. Uh, and you even see this now with secular stuff with, like, you know, vision boards. and I mean, think about that. Oh, that's so weird to think about. Think about the oldest cave drawings <clears throat> where people would draw deer, and then they would draw, like, an arrow through the deer. And now think about a vision board now. They're really not that different. Cave art back then, you know, 10,000 years ago, actually more than that, uh, more like 15,000 years ago, not that different from stuff that New Age people are doing now. Um, I mean, and, and think about what they're doing when they when they draw, for example. This is a very uh, totemistic act. When they draw that deer, and they put an arrow through it, and then they go out and they hunt a deer, and when they get a deer, they erase the deer and start over. That's like prehistoric, esoteric, quantum entanglement. That's really what that is. They're they're actually actively trying to inter- influence the outside world using representations to make it real, to make something abstract, something in here happen out there. Uh, it, it's just amazing. It's amazing that it hasn't changed that much, even in secular circles. There are people in Silicon Valley right now engaging in behavior that. You know, if you just change the materials that they're working with, it's inherently a caveman, uh, a prehistoric, a primitive, a, a pre-homo sapiens even act, and it's a religious act. Uh, it, it's easy to, to treat you know those sorts of things, oh, vision boards and things like that, as uh, as uh, just a purely economic uh, and sterile and, and non-spiritual act. But I mean, really, what are, what are they doing? They're even if they don't believe that the prayers are being answered by a deity or uh, any force of nature, it, it's just, you know, the universe. Very generic concept. It's still magic, with a K. It's still ritual, with a capital R. So, yeah, I mean, uh, totemism is, is not a religion in and of itself, although some religions, absolutely, totemism is the, the fundamental component. And the Ajibe, it, it's very clear that, and, and Inuit, uh, that the underlying principles of their belief structure stem from totemism. So that's the difference between animism and totemism. And um, that's actually really it. This is a shorter video than usual because, well, those are two pretty simple concepts and and really the goal 
uh, here today isn't just to flesh out those two ideas. It's also to get, encourage you to, to actually look into them because Shinto is a, in my opinion, it's one of the most fascinating religions uh, because in many ways it's it reflects in a modern and technologically advanced society, uh, religious beliefs that are just very old, uh, antediluvian, uh, just pre-human almost is how they feel. Uh, I, I really can't use a better adjective than that to describe it. It's just old. It feels very old. Uh, and yet it exists now. You know, it, it didn't get wiped out like so many others. So, yeah, look into Shintoism as a source for animism and look into either Inuit totemism, Amazonian totemism, or uh, Ajibe totemism because those are also very interesting and you see them all over the place even now. I mean, if you think about family crests and um, symbols that people use, that, that people put on their homes, it's all very totemistic. And uh, the fact that we've done this for so long, even now, the fact that that little tradition just manifests in Silicon Valley and uh, inner cities and country homes and uh, I mean, it's everywhere. You you even see uh, the, the phalluses of Greece with the wings on them to protect children. Totemism is is a hundred percent natural and spontaneous, just like I was talking about with ancestor worship. It is something that happens no matter what. If we colonize uh, another galaxy someday, totemism is going to manifest there. So it's just really neat. Uh, yeah, that that's all I'm covering right now. Um, uh, like, subscribe, share, uh, and keep asking questions. Bye.